Hi, I'm Paul from Test Data Services, and this video follows on from the test plan and the test artifacts, and it's a video summary of the test summary report of a load test which I've executed against my own environment. Now I've made it as realistic as I can so that the documents make sense and when I review them they make sense. So this is what a report looks like. I've included a link to this as a PDF in the description below. So I've got a, a summary, I've got a um, contents there. Now the executive summary is meant to be ideally one page. It's easily fitting on a page in this case, mainly because there were no issues. Normally executive summaries take more time when there's issues. But this test asset executed shows that we're able to run um, 1600 OpenID Connect requests per second. Now if you don't know what they are and if you haven't looked at the other documents, there's a card up the top right you can click on to actually review that. So this is indicative of the capacity under certain circumstances to support as many as 30 million active users if this was a real um, identity management system. Now I've set it up as a mock one with millions of fake identities and you could actually uh, connect up to it as if it's a real one, but it's obviously using test data. So that's the, the high level um, message, is that it could support 30 million ongoing users. It could also support the sign up of up to a quarter of a million new users per hour. So it can support a large base of users and it can also support a high ramp up of new users. The error rates were really good with one error per more than 100,000 uh, requests. So that's a really good uh, error rate. The table below shows the three tests that were executed. So I ran a test with 10 users, 100 users, and 1,000 users. And unlike a normal load test, these users were going full speed, no pacing, no think time, because what I was really doing was I was testing the capability to support a concurrency of 10, concurrency of 100, and a concurrency of 1,000. When I did this, the average request per second was 57 for 10 and 570 for 100, and that's a 10 times multiple, that's good, but only 2,279 for 1,000. So that's only four times uh, increase. So we obviously ran into a scalability limit. From an Open ID Connect perspective, we went from 41 to 408 to 1,600. The authorized response time average was well under a second, as was the token exchange response time and the refresh response times. So they were all um, very good. Um, I did run a, another test to just double check that I didn't have a problem uh, with the load generation. And um, during the main 1000 user test, we were running at 50% of capacity. So I did run an extra test with double sized load generators and I got the same results. So I'm pretty sure that the performance with a thousand concurrent requests is as shown in this table. This here is a, a walkthrough of the logic of how I can convert a refresh rate of a thousand and fifty uh, refresh tokens uh, per second to 30 million active users. So the math is in there. I don't need to go through that right now. But I'll often put, if I make some grandiose statement like 30 million users, I need to back that up. So that's backed up here. Uh, the response time analysis, what I've done is I've summarized it into three tables. I've got my average response times here for each of the transactions. Now go back to the test artifact video to look at the actual scripts and where the start and end points were for those, or the, uh, the plan, the test plan review to look at why I'm doing that. And this, so that this table is averages and this is 90th percentiles. So even the slowest 90th percentiles was only 0.6 seconds. So even when doing uh, 2000 requests per second, we still had very good response times. Uh, in terms of total number of transactions, I also want to measure, because it's a concurrency test, how many I did. So in the 15 minutes of the measurement period for the test, we did 51,000 with 10 uses, 515,000 with 100, which is obviously 10 times, which is what we would want. But instead of getting to 5 million, we only got to 2 million, so it's only four times. The tests executed, I normally have a section saying what I did do compared to what I planned to do. In this case, I did all the things that I'd expected to do. Um, and from a, I usually include a recommendation section. Now normally, 
we would identify some substantial problems in a test run. This time I didn't. I did establish that there was a limit, but that limit's way beyond what's necessary at the moment. But if we needed to uh, handle 2,000 requests per second, we'd obviously want more headroom. Uh, before just increasing the Lambda uh, concurrency limit, which is on the default AWS setting at the moment of 1,000, before increasing that really should do some decent tuning. So that's what I've recommended in there. Um, the environmental observation slash monitoring. Now, in a lot of tests that I run, I don't get access to the back end. Uh, the most I often get is screenshots of um, CloudFront, uh, Cloud, CloudWatch. Um, if I was engaged long term uh, with an organization, I'm sure I would set up um, interfaces so that I could actually fetch this data and, and have it as part of the data from a test. But I often go in and do a test, I go in, do my test and leave, and I'm, I'm just there for a few days. So I will often be given you know, screenshots of something like this. So this is Lambda um, calls, invocations, um, and the duration. This line here, the orange line, is the duration average, which is almost sitting at zero, uh, 20 milliseconds. And um, the, the green line is what the maximum was. So we did have some that ran for the full 10 seconds, or in this case, 20 seconds. And this is the concurrent executions. So we had 116 in a 1,000 user test for this Lambda call. This one was about 150-ish. And this was 150-ish as well. Our total was several hundred, but it was under the, the thousand. Um, this is a screenshot from the DynamoDB uh, monitoring page for one particular table. And we were seeing uh, several thousand write units of capacity in the larger test. The smaller test was nothing, really. Then we had the, um, the 100 user test here, and this is the 1,000 user test. I just expanded that so you can see it with a bit more detail. Uh, but this is information supporting what was going on in the back end in lieu of a proper uh, monitoring system that would actually give us full insight into what's happening at the index level or the table level or the lambda level. Uh, during a test, it's really important that we make sure that our load generators uh, are not causing us to mis misunderstand or misreport the response times. So I normally... Um, at least check CPU. CPU is normally the, the constraint, unless you have a lot of logging. Uh, in this case, for the 1,000 user test, we're sitting at 50%, which is good. Uh, for most of my tests, I would get concerned and maybe rerun the test if I'm frequently over 70%. Then the rest of the report is a detailed summary using the load runner analysis so it goes through and does the, the standard summary for 12.63, it all changes in Load Runner 2020. I also included the result table for the 15 minutes from the fifth, fifth minute, which is what I said in the test plan I would focus on. And then I've got all the graphs, so running users, hits per second, throughput, average response time. So this is a two second scale. I also make sure that all my scales in my response times or any, any graph really, is the same between test runs and between tests. If a scale is no longer appropriate, I put two graphs in, one with the scale that matches the other graphs, and then one with the scale which gives you the information you might need. If we were to scroll right down to the 1,000 user test, probably makes sense. There we can see that um, we've got our transaction counts here. We did over a million refresh tokens uh, in that test. But in that 15 minutes, we just did 946,000, which is still quite a, quite a bit for 15 minutes. We can see here that I've, I've also got in all my graphs the time, local time uh, on the bottom axis, uh, so that people can easily uh, correlate something that's happened in a test to, um, to something on a back end or some downstream system. You can see the ramp up there. Hits per second was at about 28, 2900. Uh, throughput was not very high, 3.9 megabytes a second, but they were very simple requests with fairly small uh, responses. And this is the average response time, unlike the 10 or 100 user response time graph, which was down here at these levels. When we were trying to do uh, more than four times that load, we we're effectively close to peak load, 
the response was the transactions got slower and that's how that's how this worked so that's that's what's happened there but we don't have any really large transactions uh, they're all you know, well under a second which is great um, I also include here uh, key transactions uh, per second just so we can see which is which so here we can see this red line is the uh, authorization uh, refresh tokens and we can check it's the right one 1084 is the uh, the graph maximum which is the right one there I have total transactions per second um, open ID connect transactions per second which was one of the key measurements we wanted to make according to the test plan and that's at 1650 ish uh, and and that's that's it so this is a walkthrough of a test document a test report and um, the next video will be the PowerPoint presentation that I would give if I had to give it to a steering committee or a board meeting or, or something of that sort. So um, I hope this is useful as a, a demonstration, not only of a test and test results, but a video presentation or summary of those results. Great. Have a good day.